Friends, if you've been following along with this series, you know that I've been looking for an editing laptop to send home with our editor to South Africa. She's been with us for a year and a half now, and she has always had a decent system to be editing on, and I can't send her with the desktop that she's been using here, so I need to find a similar PC that she can fly home with, that we can have set up before she leaves, and has all of the ports, whistles, doodads, and performance that we're looking for. And if you remember the previous video in this series, I checked out the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. You check out that video right up there. And that laptop was nearly perfect, except for the fact that it could only support 40 gigabytes of memory because I couldn't actually get to the second solder dim. So I had to look elsewhere. I had to find the ultimate editing laptop for our editor on the cheap because we don't have a whole lot of finances going around. So we needed to look in the gaming sector rather than like the professional level. But thankfully, AMD's made that easy with their Zen 2 CPU. So what I needed in a laptop to send home with Catlin was number one, I need a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 processor. That's the bare minimum eight core, 16 threads Zen 2. It's the best you're gonna get in a laptop right now. And so that's what I needed. Number two is I needed NVIDIA graphics. Having CUDA acceleration on all of the work that she does is of primary importance. Un unfortunately, we've had several issues with AMD's drivers and the fact that she's going to be working remotely. I don't want to have to try to troubleshoot something that we haven't been able to depend on in the past. Number three, I needed to have upgradable RAM up to 64 gigs. She uses a lot of RAM for After Effects, so that needed to happen. And then number four, I needed to be able to upgrade the storage, which is a pretty big deal. So that's where I decided and found out this. This is the CyberPower PC Tracer 4 R15 Slim 300. Essentially what this is, is a Tong Fang laptop, who is an ODM that I'm very familiar with because we used to work with them with our partners in South Africa, Wootware, who uses them for their Woot books. And in fact, Wootware actually sells this exact same model. So it just turns out that they were the best ever and I had to buy it from their American equivalent at this point. So Tongfeng laptop, which allows you to have access to everything you need underneath. Both DIMM slots for the RAM are available, as well as the SSD, plus a bonus M.2 SSD drive that you can slot a secondary drive into, which is what we're going to be doing, so that our editor can go home with at least two terabytes of storage and 64 gigs of RAM. But the specs underneath the hood, the one that I picked up was a Ryzen 7 4800H, had eight gigabytes of DDR4 2666, an RTX 2060, 500 gig Western Digital Blue SN 550 NVMe SSD, as well as Intel Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. So those are the bare minimum specs. I have everything that I need and I have all of the ports in order to make it happen. So let's go ahead and talk about the review of this laptop because I would say that this is good for anybody who needs something that is mildly portable, something that you're gonna keep at a desk for a longer period of time and aren't going to be traveling too far, or trying to do a lot of work on the road, or if you are, you're gonna have access to a port to plug it in because you're absolutely gonna need to because the battery life in this thing is kind of atrocious. It has a 46 watt hour battery, which is bad, but it gets even worse when you look under the hood and you see that there was extra space to add more battery. There's just empty blank cartridge space underneath the laptop, Tong Fang, it's cyber power. Somebody bring this up. This is ridiculous. Our battery life was two hours and 34 minutes, which is horrendous. That's awful. That is the worst battery life I've gotten on a notebook in quite some time. Yikes. And that is before any battery degradation has come into play. This is brand new. You're only getting two and a half hours of just like web browsing use, not even gaming or not even productivity use. But thankfully, because we're going to be tied to a wall for the most part, that's not such a big deal. What is a big deal is all of the IO that you get with this laptop. So on the left side, you have the Kensington Lock Gigabit Ethernet, USB 2.0 drive, and then separate mic and headphone jacks. On the right side, you've got two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and a full SD card reader, which is great for ingesting footage. And then on the back side, that's where you get your power, your USB-C 3.1 Gen 2, HDMI 2.0 port, and two mini display port out so that you can drive all of the displays that you're going to need to, which for editing is absolutely perfect. 
The screen, it's all right. It's 15.6 inch, 1080p, 144 hertz, IPS. It looks good. Viewing angles are sufficient. Nothing necessarily wrong with it. It'll be color accurate enough that it's not necessarily going to hinder our video production, but then also you have all of the ports to drive secondary monitors that are more color accurate. The brightness isn't great. It's probably around 250 nits. If I had to guess, I couldn't find an official spec on it, which is fine indoors, not great outdoors, but as I mentioned, not a great road laptop in the first place. The keyboard's RGB in membrane. It types fine. They squished a numpad into there if that's that's your thing. The RGB is just set throughout the entire thing. You have the pre-built software in here, which is the control center, which essentially just allows you to change the lighting on your keyboard. And the touchpad is fine. Nothing to write home about. Nothing to complain about, which is always... It, that's the bare minimum of where you want to be in a laptop. There's two speakers, which again, they're fine. Like that's everything outside of the raw specs of this thing is just okay, which is all you can really ask for. The max loudness isn't overbearing. The THX that's included in this is trying to compensate for like a lack of bass. And so it gets all weird and mushy and middling. It's clear enough, sufficient for laptop speakers, useful if you don't want to wear headphones and you just want to listen to something out there. Webcam, let's let's talk about the webcam mics for a second. So despite the fact that the webcam is down below where the monitor is and it's not up top like normal and it's kind of like a nostril cam, it actually looks really decent for a 720p webcam. I'm kind of okay with this. And the microphones aren't too bad. It picks up everything that you kind of need to hear. It does give it like a, a hollow effect where it sounds like I'm talking in an empty room, which I am definitely not. But this is honestly sufficient. This is definitely a step ahead of the Zephyrus G14, which didn't even have a webcam and just had the microphone. So Catlin's going to be able to Skype us from South Africa just fine using this. We'll just have to get used to looking up her nose, I suppose. Build quality on this thing is sturdy as all heck. It has all no flexibility that I can see whatsoever. It is a, definitely a good chunky laptop. The bottom of the laptop pops open easily. And again, everything is super easily accessible. You want to upgrade the RAM. You want to upgrade the SSD. It's super simple to do that, which is probably the biggest boon of this laptop is the specs and the easy upgrade ability. The downside with those specs is the noise that the fans make. Temperature are actually fine in all of the gaming that we did all of the rendering that I tested we never got higher than 69 degrees Celsius nice but you have to sacrifice some sound quality in order to get there because the fans do get aggressive in order to make those temperatures happen, which is fine, again, for a more production-based scenario where our editor is going to be wearing headphones more often than not. There's plenty about this laptop where I can make the compromises. Battery life, it sucks, but that's not really a concern for us because it's going to be wired most of the time. Screen brightness, not great, but it's going to be used indoors. Keyboard, not phenomenal, but she uses an external keyboard. So there's a lot of compromises that went into this laptop to bring it to its price of $1,155, which is really great for the specs that you are getting. That eight core 16 thread Zen 2 CPU is right there. Let's go ahead and talk about the benchmarks with my lower end model because I brought everything down since I already had the SSD and I already had the RAM. I only got the bare minimum spec because I knew I was gonna be swapping out the components anyways. So just to give you an idea of how the RTX 2060 plays at 1080p high settings in some of the latest games with only one stick of RAM, so that's single channel memory. We averaged around 60 FPS in most of the more recent AAA titles. We haven't tested some of the newer ones like Assassin's Creed Valhalla because they're not out yet, but Catelyn's not gonna be playing that many games on this thing. So it's good enough for her that she's gonna be able to enjoy the games that she does end up playing on it and she won't have to make sacrifices there. But the benchmarks that really matter to me are more on the CPU side of things here. So our Cinebench R15 score was 187 on the single core and 1815 on the multi-core, which is what roughly we're getting on an eight core desktop CPU. So again, everything about the Ryzen chip in here is just impeccable. SSD speeds, also really good. The Western Digital Blue that was included, it's pretty dang good. 2.4 gigabytes read and 1.8 gigabytes per second write. The Samsung 970 Evo Plus that I included for her comes in at 3.5 gigabytes read and 3.2 gigabytes write, which is gonna just absolutely be the peak storage that she can get in a laptop right now so that we don't have to do any sort of upgrade in the near future. Now, Premiere Pro rendering benchmarks. This, is, this was the key thing for me. I needed to see where we were going. It's a 13 minute file that I've been test rendering on several different 
systems. My 10980XC does this in just under five minutes. My Ryzen 7 4750G, which is essentially a laptop part in a desktop, does it in 7.6 minutes. The ROG Zephyrus G14 was able to do it in 7.21, unless you had eight gigabytes of RAM, which case it did in 15. The CyberPower PC with the 2060, with only eight gigabytes of RAM, did it in 13.28 minutes. So still faster than the G14. And then with the 64 gigabytes of RAM going into dual channel mode and increasing the RAM speed to 3200, we got 6.8 minutes on a 13 minute render, which is as good as we need it to be for what we're doing here. It's almost to where a 10980XE would be. It's just two minutes more, not even, which is great for a laptop. So I am confident with this thing that I'm gonna be able to send her home with it and she's gonna be able to do all of our video production that way. It has the SD card reader, has all of the USB ports she's gonna need or the ability to connect it to a USB hub. It has plenty of display outs for her to connect it to external monitors. When she does get home and actually stay tuned, get subscribed because we do have a video coming out where I'm gonna actually turn this into a triple screen monitor for her. That's the end of my journey. I am confident that this CyberPower PC tracer for R15 Slim 300 is, is the laptop to go with. It cost me $1,100, but it has the specs that we need. This is the ultimate editing laptop that I could go with. I could have possibly gone with the Ryzen 9, but again, I would only be getting some extra megahertz, no extra cores. And so this was about trying to get the max spec for the best value and CyberPower did it for me. So the Tong Fang ODM that actually makes this and gets a solid recommendation for me. I've been a fan of all of the Tong Fang laptops that we've touched. We could actually check out a previous Whoop Book video that we did about this time last year, right before we left South Africa. Uh, it was Wootware's previous Woot book. So I, I enjoyed that then. This seems to be the upgraded model with Zen CPUs. And so I can recommend the Woot book Pro 2, which Wootware is now selling in case any South Africans care about that. Anyways, I'm gonna care about my South African people who are going back home. I need to get this video done so that I can you know, send her off with it. And we're gonna be a solo team here in the United States. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.